Morning all. All right, so with the trade deadline come and gone, um, one thing that's always notable is there will be players that there's a lot of rumors they're going to get moved and they don't get moved. So I've always wanted to do a video where I talk about, hey, these guys didn't get moved. But also, you can't come up with a player from each team who hasn't gotten moved that was expected to be. So I also wanted to include players who are still playing in the National Hockey League that maybe were expected to have had their careers shortened. Maybe they weren't expected to still be around. And so, yeah, 32 players, and let's go ahead and jump in. As you can see, it's a randomized order. Uh, we're starting off with Washington. And in Washington's case, and this is a good one because I can explain things a little bit better here. So, Sonny Milano. Sonny Milano went without a qualifying offer from the Ducks. Uh, went throughout the summer without being signed. Uh, ended up being signed by the Caps, sent down to the Miners. And there was a real belief that maybe just NHL teams didn't think Milano was a good enough NHL player. And whether it was defense, whether it was something with skating, whatever. And I'm just saying, just throwing that out there. The reasons that are norm normally used, uh, I, it looked like he was probably done. But he gets called up by the Capitals and has played well. And so he's earned himself a job. And it's, it's great to see. So we start off with a positive. Uh, with the New York Rangers... You know, it's interesting to me with Capo Caco. I think he's developed into a pretty solid player. I do. I think he's he's defensively better than advertised. And I think that as part of that kid line, just a really good player. Now, is the offense what you would want out of a number two draft pick? No. But the fact that Capo Caco is still playing, and I think he's still improving, and I think the points will come. They're never going to be, I don't think he'll ever be an 80-point scorer, but 50, I could see 50, 55. And so, yeah, Kako to me has become a pretty good player for the Rangers. And <clears throat> with all the noise about, oh, the Rangers might cut him. And we, we heard that noise, I want to say two years ago, about, you know, maybe he was going to be out. He's still there, and I think he's thriving. Uh, for Toronto, uh, this, one, this one for me was pretty obvious. Justin Hall. Uh, you're not going to get a, a player who's got a more... Uh, divisive uh, reaction from Toronto fans than Justin Hall. Um, I think Hall's fine as a defenseman. I, I don't think that Hall hurts the Toronto Maple Leafs, but there are Leafs fans that do not like Hall being part of the lineup. And Sandine going to Washington and doing well has got some of them starting up again about, glad we still have Hall and got rid of Sandine. Which, and I think that's apples to oranges. They're not the same kind of defenseman you're you're not going to get the same the same kind of game from Hall that you're going to get from Sandine. And so I while I get the sentiment and I'm a Sandine fan myself, I think Hall gets a lot of criticism, but he's still there. And through everything for years now, he's still there. Uh for Arizona. So Arizona everybody seemed to be available. And there was discussions about whether or not Nick Schmaltz might get moved at the deadline. He's still there. Now, what's interesting, too, is that he's not only still there, but he's seen as a key guy for the Arizona Coyotes going forward. And uh, Schmaltz, I think, along with Keller and along with Hayden, I think they've got a pretty good core there up front. And so, yeah, he's still there for one. And for two, I don't think he's going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, for San Jose, another one that, uh, despite everything, he's still there as Kevin LeBanc. Uh, and, and San Jose, a team that's that's definitely sold guys off. I'm not saying LeBanc's going to stay there a long time. There are going to be guys on this list that could very well be gone off their team at the end of the year, but the fact they're still there is something. Uh, LeBanc has had good and bad seasons. This year has kind of been a mix of both, uh, depending on which month of the season you want to look at. I, I like LeBanc's game at times. There are times as well where he's kind of invisible. Uh, but yeah, LeBanc still being in San Jose, mild surprise for me on that one a little bit. Uh, for Vancouver, I didn't have to think very hard with, with Vancouver. Really didn't. Uh, for years now, <clears throat> it's been at least three years, we've heard Besser's on his way out. You know who's going to go? Besser. Vancouver's going to trade Besser. He's still there. And not only that, but I honestly, I think that, yeah, the goal scoring hasn't been great this year, but I think he's playing well. I think under Talkett, I think he's one of those guys who's responded really well. 
I think Vancouver should keep him. Again, Brock fan, absolutely. I've got a couple of jerseys with his name on the back. But I, I think he's played well enough that, I mean, you, you'd have to cut salary money somewhere. I, I don't think Besser has to be the guy. He probably still will be the guy. I'm just saying I don't think he has to be. For L.A., L.A. was tough because there's nobody I look at on their, in their lineup and say, I'm surprised he wasn't traded. I'm surprised he's still playing for the Kings. But uh, one that I, I will throw up here is Alex Edler because at the time that, that he left Vancouver, uh, I, I don't know that we saw more than a year left for him. And I think going to L.A. has helped rejuvenate him. I think he's playing... He's played better in L.A. than he did that final year in Vancouver, I think, anyways. And he was the one that I came up with. And honestly, it would have been Jonathan Quick had not the Kings traded him at the deadline. Um, and I thought about Cal Peterson, but the reality is Cal Peterson's contract still belongs to the Kings, but he's down with the Ontario Reign. He's not playing for the L.A. Kings. So then I'd have to open myself up to looking at AHL rosters for all 32 teams, and, and my answer to that would be no, not for this. Uh, for Winnipeg, so it's interesting how the Winnipeg Jets approach things with Pierre-Luc Dubois. He wasn't going to sign long-term. They did not do what the Calgary Flames did with Kachuk. They didn't trade him. They kept him, and it looked foolish on some level at the time, but honestly, he's had a good year. And while Winnipeg right now has been having their struggles, part of the reason for their struggles is an injury to Dubois. So I, I think that Dubois has shown himself to be a pretty solid player right now. And it doesn't mean he wants to stay with the Jets either. He could still end up in Montreal this summer. But I think it's interesting to see that a team took this tactic of, yeah, he may want out, but we still like the player. So we still have him under, under contract for this year. And, you know, it's something Florida didn't do with Huberto and with, with Uyghur. And, of course, both Florida and Calgary have fallen off this year. So... Is that part of it? Probably, yes. Um, I'm not saying that if Kachuk stays in Calgary that they're necessarily above above the playoff line. But it's it's an interesting idea. And uh, sadly, uh, for, for the Flames and for the Panthers, that trade, it doesn't look like it's worked out for either team. Uh, Carolina? So Carolina, there isn't anybody that I look at and say I'm surprised he wasn't traded. So I'm going to go with Jalen Chatfield, and here's why. Jalen Chatfield could not break through as a top six defenseman with the Vancouver Canucks, who are widely recognized as a team with one of the thinnest defense cores in the league. Uh, and at the, at the very least, it has been over the last few years, not to disparage the members of the Canucks blue line. But the fact that Chatfield's gone to Carolina, played pretty well, and he's been part of their top six, to me, is nothing short of miraculous. And it, it shows that either Vancouver didn't see what they had in Chatfield, which honestly could be the case. There are instances of that with Vancouver over the many years. I could do a whole video on players that the Canucks have, have, have not necessarily judged the guy's value correctly. But Chatfield has really improved his game in Carolina as well. So it's, it's worked, and it's been a good story. Uh, for the New York Islanders, so coming up to the deadline... How many times was Scott Mayfield traded? Uh, yeah, the media had Mayfield was going. Mayfield's Mayfield's gone. Mayfield, oh yeah, Mayfield's going to go. He's still with the Islanders last time I checked. Um, Scott Mayfield, decent defenseman. I, I think it was a case of Lou Lamorello. If there were calls, there just wasn't an offer he couldn't say no to. And this is a team that's, you know, in a playoff spot. You can't be moving out a defenseman for future assets. And, and you're not, you're not going to get a team offering you a guy who has the same cap hit and has term as Mayfield because they're looking to add defense. So I get why Mayfield's still there. It is a bit of a surprise. For Detroit, another one. For all of the noise around Philip Zadina, he is still a Red Wing. Again, he may be gone this summer, like Mayfield may be gone from the Islanders this summer. But Zadina's name was out there a lot at the trade deadline. Oh, yeah, Zadina. Zadina, my understanding is there's offers for Zadina. Keep an eye on Zadina. Yeah, no, we've got... And this is why I'm glad I'm not one of the insiders, because I have no doubt they have actual sources telling them these things. But when it doesn't happen, that's when the internet dives on them and says, see, you don't have sources. You guys are just full of crap. So, yeah, uh, Zadina still being a member of the Wings. Mild surprise for me on that one. Uh, Buffalo... 
Now, Kyle Ocpozo is their captain. But think back a few years with Kyle Ocpozo's contract when it was seen as this, this weight around the neck of the Buffalo Sabres. And he wasn't playing well. And he, he wasn't playing in the NHL throughout it. But he's bounced back. And he's been really good the last couple of years. He's played his role. Uh, again, the offense not what it was before he signed that contract with Buffalo. But that's just fine. Buffalo not in a cap problem situation right now. And as Ocpozo's contract comes to an end, would any of us be surprised if Buffalo extended him? I think the answer to that is no. Now, if it's for the same cap hit, I, I think that might be, you know, a time where we ask Kevin Adams, you know, in a nice way, did you hit your head recently? But, and I say that because Ocpozo is, what, still $6 million, so I don't think he gets $6 million in the next contract, but if he signs a contract for, say, $2 million a year for two years, I don't think anybody bats an eye right now. Uh, he's been a decent captain for them. Uh, Florida... So this is one where it's not because he's still in Florida. It's because Eric Stahl is still going. And not only that, but Eric Stahl, who went a long time without a contract, is playing well for Florida. He has had a good run with Florida this year. Uh, 12 goals so far. And again, I think that's more than many of us might have expected. He is hot and cold, but who isn't? And yeah, I, I, I think it's impressive he's kept his career going. He's one of those guys who's on the, the cusp of maybe Hall of Fame, maybe not. If Florida were to make the playoffs and go on a Stanley Cup run and he's holding up the cup, that would in, improve his chances. Uh, for Calgary, if there's anybody in the league who I, I've been surprised by more than Michael Stone, in terms of uh, he'll go without a contract, and then there's, well, you know, Calgary's been talking to him, and then it'll just happen. He's just, he's in Calgary, he's still in Calgary. Uh, would I be surprised if it happens again? Well, he's without a contract. He may go back to Calgary. We don't know yet. Not really. Uh, Michael Stone, he has a really good shot. I think he's a decent defenseman. And again, um, I'm always surprised by some of these players that just sit out there as free agents where I'm thinking, wait a minute, for a million dollars, wouldn't he be useful for a team? Especially for eight hundred grand, wouldn't he be useful for a team? And Stone's one of those guys where he's got a good shot. He's not a perfect defenseman, but you're not going to pay him like a perfect defenseman. So I'm always surprised by Stone being out there, but I'm glad he's still in Calgary. He seems to really enjoy it there. Uh, Edmonton, this is a good story. Uh, Devin Shore went through a lot. Went through a lot in terms of waived and, and you know, set down, brought up, and waiting to play. So Shore is an example of you, you don't give up on your dream and you can be rewarded for not just saying, you know, I, I think I'll just go over to Europe and have a more standard playing schedule and not have to worry about all the waiver stuff. So I think Shore has been a good story this year for Edmonton and I, I hope he gets regular ice time in the playoffs for them when they get there. I think he could be useful fourth liner. Uh, another player who had a lot of discussions at the deadline oh he's going uh my understanding is Carson Soucy's on his way out of Seattle I heard that a lot uh Carson Soucy uh Seattle's getting calls they're they're thinking about it Seattle was interesting at the deadline in that they stood pat I get why they did it I don't think it was the wrong call I think this is a team that's not close to winning a Stanley Cup so the idea of going out and getting rentals wouldn't make a lot of sense they're also in a playoff spot, so renting guys out doesn't make a lot of sense either. You just tell them, I've got faith in this lineup. You guys do as best you can. And Carson Soucy is still part of that roster. Uh, for Columbus, uh, th this is one that I, I, I'm glad to see has turned out. So Liam Foody, early on, looked like he was going to be a really good player in the NHL. Uh, the first time that Columbus called him up, I was like, I'm impressed with this kid. He's good. And then he's been very, very quiet for the most part, until the last couple of months. He's actually playing well for Columbus. He's finally got some goals. Uh, that, I think, was 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 a weight on him, was the fact he hadn't had any goals in the NHL yet, and how many games it had been he's been in the NHL. I would imagine he was getting that question a lot. Hey, Liam, you were on the net tonight. Do you think you're getting close to your first goal? What's his answer going to be? I can't go back in time. I, I can't go back in time. I don't know if I'm close to my first goal, so I don't, I don't know what's going to happen in the next game. So... Uh, Foodie has, has been patient. They've been patient with him. And again, first round pick who might be seen as a bust by some. But if he becomes regular in the NHL, that's still pretty good. 
Uh, for Boston, so it was clear that Jake DeBrusque's problem was with Bruce Cassidy because when the coaching change happened, he rescinded his trade request. And DeBrusque's been excellent. It was the best move Boston made was not to trade Jake DeBrusque because his value would have been very low. He would have gone somewhere else, probably would have been a 25 goal scorer, and Boston would have had egg on their face. And then they probably still would have moved off for Bruce Cassidy anyways. Um, I get the feeling that was going to happen, whether it was the Jake situation or whatever it was. There was there was various reasons they felt that they had to ch make a change behind the bench. But DeBrusque's been excellent for the Bruins this year. He's played first-line minutes, and he's fit in. And he's got energy. He's got the skill. Uh, it's been something to watch. Uh, for New Jersey... It feels like there's there's a portion of the New Jersey Devils fandom that would like to see Damon Severson gone. Uh, and I say that as somebody who I, I kind of understand where they're coming from with that. There's a good, deep defense core there in New Jersey. And if, if there was a change and Severson was moved on from, that would make some sense. But at the same time, New Jersey, probably figuring, you know, it's a playoffs. We want to make sure we've got depth on the blue line. And so they don't move Severson. But his name has been mentioned more by fans than anybody else, but I've heard some in the media here and there, too. Uh, so he's, he's still a devil. Severson's still there. Uh, for Dallas, there really wasn't much when it came to Dallas for a player that I would say I'm surprised he's still there. But Roddick Foxa, who the offense is sporadic, and the criticism I see a lot with him is he doesn't score enough, he doesn't drive enough offense. But defensively, he's solid. And I've I've been impressed with Fox at points this year for the Dallas Stars. And he's still there too, uh, former first round pick who reinvented himself as a bottom six forward to to have a regular job in the NHL. And I think he's done that well, um, sort of along the same lines as a Manny Melhotra back in the day. Reinvents himself, becomes indispensable for certain teams. But for Fox, he's been a star throughout. He's still a star now. I'd be kind of surprised if he wasn't still a Dallas Star next season. But I, I, there's a lot of negativity I do see at times when it comes to Foxa. Uh, for Colorado, Eric Johnson still going. Still going, still in Colorado, and was the one for Colorado. Because, again, when I'm looking at these rosters, I'm looking at all the stats and everything, it's a matter of, okay, so who am I kind of surprised is still there? I'm kind of surprised that Eric Johnson's still there. Uh, Johnson, uh, you know, has injury issues here and there along the way, but yeah, Johnson's been good for them, and he's he's still a member of the Avalanche after all these years. Uh, Jack Johnson came in; they got rid of Jack Johnson. Now Eric Johnson's the Johnson in Colorado. Uh, for Anaheim, how many years has the speculation been that maybe John Gibson doesn't want to stay in Anaheim? Maybe the rebuild isn't great for John Gibson. He's in his prime. He's one of the better goaltenders in the league. This this isn't going to help him. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's time. And he's still there. And anytime he's been asked about it, he's been very vocal that he wants to stay in Anaheim. He wants to see this through. He He's excited about the young players, and he wants to be there. So John Gibson's name gets thrown out there a lot. Uh, there are websites that will throw names on them in order to try to, you know, entice people to click on whatever. And you read through a whole article and you go, I didn't learn anything. There wasn't anything actually in that. And it's it's not just in sports. That's happening a lot with entertainment. I don't know how many times I'll, I'll see an article. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And then I'll click on it and go, I didn't learn anything there. I already knew all that. Or that's all speculation and there's no actual fact behind any of this. What we think is happening. Well, no, 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 no. Let's not do that. Let's do the actual what is happening, not what we think is happening. Um, so anyways, John Gibson, what we think is happening, what's actually happening, very often quite different. Uh, St. Louis. How many years have we had St. Louis fans saying, move Pareko? The difference is this year, there were rumors that Pareko might actually get traded. That Colton Pareko's time in St. Louis was coming to an end, despite that contract having the term on it that it does. Now, I'll also add a caveat. Uh, Pareko may very well get moved this summer. Pareko may end up out of St. Louis this summer. Uh, there may be a taker on that contract. They may have to do some salary retention, but somebody may take that contract. And I get it, because Pareko hasn't had a great season, but... 
again, it might be easier to move that contract in the offseason. Uh, Chicago. All right, so Chicago, this is one that just surprises me a bit. Uh, Chicago has had a lot of goaltenders come and go. Alex Stalock, to me, is the one that, if a team was looking for a, a reliable backup at the deadline, I thought Stalock might be the one to go. Uh, Mrazek, the, the money probably makes it prohibitive, but Stalock, I thought there was a decent chance he'd go because we've seen how many young goaltenders have come up for Chicago this year and played relatively well, plus Chicago hasn't played games that have meant much in the standings since, what, early November? So I'm I'm still I'm kind of mildly surprised that Stalock's still there. Maybe they didn't get the offers for him. Maybe they weren't wanting to move him. But either way, he's still in Chicago. Pittsburgh. Now, this is a good story. So people are going to fast forward to the end of this and be mad. The Chris Letang's name's on the board. But if you think about the strokes, you think, and not the band, I'm talking ones he's had, uh, and you think about all of the injury issues he's had throughout his career, the fact that he's still playing and that he's at all effective is nothing short of remarkable. Uh, Chris Letang has been quite the story. Uh, I would think a Masterton Trophy has to be in the offing for him due to his dedication to hockey, again, going through what he has health-wise. And it's, it's, again, it's a good story. I think it's a good story. So again, people are going to fast forward to the end. I can't believe put Latang on the board, right? And and it's not in a bad way. These are not necessarily meant in a bad way at all. <clears throat> Which I know when I title this, that's how it's going to come off, because uh, it's hard to title it in a way that it won't come off in sort of a bad way. Oh, I got a cough. We're getting into spring, so now my allergies are going to act up. All right, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay was tough too, because there's not really anybody who's overstayed their welcome. I'm mildly surprised Brian Elliott's still the backup. Uh, Brian Elliott is a goaltender who was very prominent, a lot of shutouts, solid goals against, solid save percentage years back, and now he's he's really evolved into being a, a decent backup. And Tampa Bay with Vasilevsky, that's all they really need. It's just a guy who's decent. They don't need a great backup, just a decent backup. Elliott's that for him, and he's still there. Uh, for Ottawa... I, you know, I get the feeling that when hockey players retire, there are some that could write stories about their lives that are really interesting and some who probably don't have a whole lot there to say. Uh, but Travis Hamanick, I get the feeling that if he ever decides to do a biography, that could be really interesting to read. Um, now, Hamanick, whether it was when he was in Calgary and Vancouver and now in Ottawa, has always been a guy who attracts a lot of attention. Um, Hamannick's a decent defenseman. I'm mildly surprised that Ottawa at the deadline didn't didn't move him and that nothing happened there. And I say that because uh, while I know Ottawa wasn't selling, I felt like Hamannick was a guy who could get moved, that it wouldn't really negatively impact the rest of the team that much. That being said, he's still there. Uh, I don't know that I'd be that surprised if he's still around next season, but we shall see. Uh, but yeah, I... I I opted for Hamannick with Ottawa. This, And I also will throw this out there. If there's anybody that you, you think uh, should be mentioned for a team that ha I haven't mentioned, by all means, let me know in the comment section. Come up with your own list. No, no issue with that at all. Montreal. So, again, trade deadline speculation. And I haven't heard what team was offering a first-round pick for Josh Anderson, but the report was that Montreal said, nope. First round pick for Josh Anderson, who right now has 21 goals, and they said no. Now, if that's true, I respect them. I respect them for sticking to their guns and figuring we're not going to move Josh Anderson. But we don't know 100% for certain that was true, and we don't know 100% which team was making that offer. But Anderson's been good. That being said, the fact that he was worth at least a first rounder, I'm kind of surprised they didn't find some way to move him to acquire future assets. But he's still there for now. Philadelphia... Well, this is going to be kind of a. This is going to be kind of one of those ones that. Uh, well, if you're a Philadelphia fan, you you may not be happy to see the name on the board. Uh, James Van Riemsdyk's on an expiring contract. They tried to trade him. They did. Um, and whether it was that they overvalued the asset right up until the deadline, and then it was too tough to actually make that move. Detroit rumored to be the team that was in on getting Van Riemsdyk, uh, but it just fell through. 
Uh, Van Riemsdyk is still a member of the Flyers for the rest of this season. His contract expires. I don't think he's going to be with the Flyers again next year. But again, it's a surprise he's there after the deadline, considering they were a team that should have been selling. Uh, Vegas. Vegas, I went in another direction. Vegas is a team that has had a lot of issues staying under the salary cap. I'm really surprised Riley Smith has not at some point become uh, the, the one to go out the door because of salary cap reasons. Uh, that being said, he might be having his best year in the NHL this year. It's worked out really well for Vegas this season. Uh, Riley Smith, the goal scoring's been really solid. His overall play's been good. Uh, but he's still there. He's one of six players who are still there from when Vegas had their expansion all that year, all those years back, their first year. And so, yeah, he's part of that misfit line with Marcia So and Carlson, which is not together as often now as it was, say, three, four years ago. But there are times during a game where those three guys are thrown out on the ice together because they have great familiarity with each other and really good chemistry. But yeah, Riley Smith, I thought, might be on his way out. And there was definitely some concern about whether or not they'd be able to fit him under the cap. The one that now I wonder how long he stays is William Carlson. But again, uh, Vegas has surprised me before. Thus, Riley Smith's name on the board. Nashville. Wasn't that long ago that Cl Cody Glass was seen as a player who wasn't going to play regularly in the NHL. Uh, this is after he was seen as a you know top prospect and ends up being drafted sixth overall in his draft year. But Glass has carved out a decent job for himself in in or decent role for himself, I should say, with the Nashville Predators, and he plays it well. I mean, he's not a top line guy, no, but he's still in the National Hockey League, and that's not nothing. That's a double negative. So, uh, yeah, that's that's uh, something that I I think is is impressive. And again, people always get stuck on this whole, well, this guy's a bust and that's guy, that guy's a bust. Look, once the draft's done. Unless the player never plays in the NHL or is an absolute disaster in the NHL, you're still getting an NHL player. In, in most cases, in the first round, you're still getting an NHL player. And right now in Nashville, Cody Glass is that. And we end off with Minnesota. And Minnesota, this one, this one was really easy and honestly kind of inspired this video. Matt Dumba. How many times has Matt Dumba been traded for Brock Besser? How many times has that happened? How many times has the media said... We're getting, a, we're getting a lot of reports that Matt Dumba and Brock Besser are going to get flipped. And there's a simple reason. Uh, Minnesota needed offense. Besser's seen as a goal scorer. Vancouver needs defense. Dumba's a defenseman. Both of them make roughly the same in terms of salary cap hit, so you wouldn't have to worry too much about the money aspect. And it didn't happen. Never happened. That was the rumor for years was Besser for Dumba. And that's why they're both on the board. So let me know your thoughts. And again, let me know your picks for players that you're surprised are still with the team they're with right now. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And hey, thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.